Hello and welcome everyone. So I'll be explaining a very interesting problem. Uh, recent Div 2 round 737, problem B, Moaman and K sub arrays. So uh, <clears throat> I re personally, I really enjoyed this problem. Uh, enjoyed this problem while solving. Um, so yeah, let's demonst uh, demonstrate the part. Um, yeah, the problem actually says that you're going to be given n distinct integers, okay, like an array containing n integers, but they are going to be distinct. Each and every value is going to occur exactly once. Your goal is to sort the array in non-decreasing order. Now, um, how will you do that? You will. You are allowed to follow some operations in specific order exactly once. What are these uh, operations that I need to do in order to sort the initial array? Also, and uh, again I'm telling you, the n integers are all going to be distinct. Okay? They're going to be distinct. Okay, now, um, yeah, what were the operations that you have to do? The operation is that you can split the array into k non-empty subarrays doesn't matter what the subarray size is but you have to make the whole array you have to divide the whole array into k non-empty subarrays and then based on those subarrays you are gonna re rearrange those subarrays and you will you will try to try to find out if you whether you can make the whole array sorted or not okay uh, that's exactly what they've told you're gonna have to create exactly exactly k non-empty sub arrays such that each element belongs to exactly one sub array then reorder those sub arrays arbitrarily uh, according to your choice and then merge those sub arrays into new order order such that whether you could make the array or you could make the array sort in non-decreasing order now the question is basically yes or no if you whether you can make it or not if you could make it somehow then the answer is yes otherwise no and also one thing to notice is that each and every value of the array could contain negative value that's why there are modulus here um, n is up to 10 to the power 5 okay now the question is how uh, what could be the approach now let's take one example here the first example here we're we're gonna be taking like our k is equal to 4 which means uh, the in the first example here k is equal to 4 which means that we no matter what happens we have to create k sub arrays uh, irrespective of the size but should be k sub arrays okay um, uh, which means dividing the array into k subgroups and then um, doing some operations reordering them trying to make the array um, sort um, make the array as, uh, in non-decreasing orders uh, sorting possible okay non-decreasing possible sort okay um, uh, sorting operations uh, so yeah um, so yeah how are we gonna do this now let's let's take this example and show you that we could do uh we could we could make it uh, possible we could sort this array um but how will, are we gonna do that now think about it here k was equal to four k i will come to this example later but first we're gonna take a look at this example k is four k is four now we're guaranteed that we have to create k sub array, uh, four sub arrays. So the elements are like six, and then we got three. After that, we have four, two, and then one. Now, the way that I thought first was okay. I will try my best to create as increasing group as possible. Okay as increasing group as possible that's what i thought first uh, by seeing the first example and uh, by doing that what i'm actually trying to create is that i want to create as increasing group or as increasing sub array as possible such that the total number of sub array decreases as possible 
and if that number of subarray is always like less than or equal to k then I can guarantee that um, uh, I could get my answer so let's explain that in detail here just think about it okay so the way uh, I was actually judging this was okay so we've got 6 and then 3 now I know that 6 like 3 is a smaller than 6 so it's not increasing so yeah this could be my one possible subarray now after that 3 comes and then 4 okay they are increasing that's cool but after that here it comes we uh, here we get 2 but that is like in a decreasing fashion we don't want that so we could make this as another group or another subarray think about it after that okay we have 2 but we have 1 after two we have one but we were not expecting that so we we are we have no other choice but to go and create this as a as our subarray there you go now we have only left one value which is one now what we're gonna do is we're gonna count the total number of subarrays how many subarrays did we get one two three and four right okay does that uh, fulfill our condition? Does that subarray count is less than or equal to k, which is 4? Yes, it is actually equal to 4. But if it had been less than 4, still that would hap uh, that would be possible. Why? Why is that possible? Think about it. You are maximizing the groups of sorting uh, parts. So you could easily break down those sorting parts according to your choices and make them equal to k so that's why if the total number of subarray of the that sorting fashion groups if they get less than or equal to k then you have a chance you have a chance only when you can you could reorder those subarrays in such a way that the array does become sorted now let's try to manipulate these uh, groups or subarrays is it possible to make it sorted? Yes, I think I think we can do this. If I move this subarray here in the first position, then I move this in the second position, then I move this subarray in the third position and this subarray in here. What happens is one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, yeah, one, two, th one, two, three, four, and six. Sorry for that. One, two, three, four, and six. Yeah. So that's how you could. Uh, that's how I imagine the first uh, by uh, by seeing the first example. But not always we can. Uh, not always we cannot get. Uh, the approach is good. The approach is decent. But we're not actually directly getting there. Why is that? There are some. Um, there are some examples that I have to show you. That it's not always possible to think like that but we are actually getting there closer to the solution I will talk about it later but before that I'm gonna explain the uh, the desired um, uh, example that I really wanted to show you guys so that you could understand that the way that I thought the first example was not correct but close to correct which was this example that I took at the at the beginning two four three five what if the elements what if the elements are two four three and five now as usual you would go similarly like the first example okay yeah two four it's increasing we have a chance now three okay no we don't have a chance now we have like yeah three and five yeah they are increasing okay you've got increasing but can you make and manipulate this groups such that it becomes a sorted array because the sorted portion says that you will have two three four and five now if you could if you just rearrange rearrange in some way you can you will find that there's no other possible combinations only two sub arrays if I even exchange them like that if I make three five comes first and two four it doesn't it doesn't fulfill why is this happening because the increment the increment group that we're getting yes they are incre increasing but 
are they directly immediate after increment incremental value? No, because I know that after three we have four, but four was passed passed away. We do have five, which is greater than three, obviously, but it's not the immediate greater. Then something tricked my mind was that, okay, so basically what we have to do is we have to put, uh, and also we are told that the elements value are not going to be permutations, but any number. Doesn't matter, any number, there will be any number. But the condition is that they are going to be distinct. So I thought that why don't we just make these values or the make the values that we are given, why don't we just make them a permutation? Exactly. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to convert our in, um, initial array to a permutation. By doing that, we are making sure that which value comes after exactly immediate after which then we will easily find out our solution i will clear it uh, um, i will clear it down uh, by taking the same example i'll i will clear it to you how is this no not the same example let's take a different example let's take um, yeah let's take um, let's take an example like that minus 5 we have and then we have like 1 and uh, we have 2 and let's say we have minus 10 so we've got 1 2 3 4 4 value now uh, like Okay, let's let's bring it down to 20. Now, what we, what I did was I actually sorted the array. First I sorted the array by taking into another account of another array. So, like if if I sort this, I will get minus 10, minus 5, and then 1 and then 20. Now, after doing that, if you just rearrange rearrange in some way, you can you will find that there's no other possible combinations, only two subarrays. If I even exchange them like that, if I make three, five comes first and two, four, it doesn't, it doesn't fulfill. Why is this happening? Because the increment, the increment group that we're getting, yes, they are incre increasing, but are they directly immediate after increment, incremental value? No. Because I know that after three we have four, but four was passed passed away. We do have five, which is greater than three, obviously, but it's not the immediate greater. Then something tricked my mind was that, okay, so basically what we have to do is we have to put, uh, and also we are told that the elements value are not going to be permutations, but any number doesn't matter any number there will be any number but the condition is that they are going to be distinct so I thought that why don't we just make these values or the make the values that we are given why don't we just make them a permutation exactly that's exactly what we're gonna do we're gonna convert our in um, initial array to a permutation by doing that we are making sure that which value comes after exactly immediate after which then we will easily find out our solution i will clear it uh, um, i will clear it down uh, by taking the same example i'll i will clear it to you how is this no not the same example let's take a different example let's take um, yeah let's take um, let's take an example like that minus 5 we have and then we have like 1 and uh, we have 2 and let's say we have minus 10 so we've got 1 2 3 4 4 value now uh, like 
okay let's let's bring it down to 20 now what what I did was I actually sorted the array first I sorted the array by taking into another account of another array so like if, if I sort this I will get minus 10 minus 5 and then 1 and then 20 now, after doing that So yeah, after after doing that, after sorting the array, we're gonna make the permutation. Like this is gonna be our first one, this is gonna be second one, this is gonna be third one, and this is gonna be fourth one. And we're gonna map it. As the values are distinct, we don't have to worry about it. So as the values are distinct, everything is gonna be dif uh, different. So yeah, we could easily permute these values. And then after that, let's bring it down here our initial error let's bring it down here so yeah minus 5 would become 2 according to our map it, it will be our second um, incremental one and this will be 1 will be our third incremental one 20 will be our fourth inc incremental one and then we have minus 10 which is going to be our first incremental one now according to that think about it what's gonna happen yes we could make this as a particular subarray because we know 2 3 and 4 are immediately after one another right and we have another subarray like that so by doing that we're gonna calculate uh, the maximum number of like the minimum number of groups possible that we could make like serially like that as we have convert, converted into a permutations using permutation it's going to be really really easy for us to compare the, those which is going to be exactly immediate after and then after that if that value if that total number of sub arrays is less than or equal to k yes the answer is yes otherwise no so yeah let's take you to the code part very easy and concise and easy to understand code now taking n taking k this is the number of groups taking the values assigning those values as uh, yeah this is the extra extra array that I, I was about to take uh, I took and after uh, just because we need to make sure that we're gonna make uh, the initial array a permutation after that we sorted we mapped and then after th that mapping value is inserted into the initial array and after that just checking if it is directly incremental or not by just uh, checking if ai minus ai minus one is not equal to one then uh, I definitely uh, I definitely know that I have to create another sub array so that's why mx plus plus if that uh, so ultimately after looping it uh, looping it out uh, when I compare mx to to um, k if, if if that is less than or equal to k then the answer is yes otherwise no but that's how we did that yeah so I hope I made you understand the problem really cool one uh, really enjoyed this yeah I hope you enjoy the solution too yeah until next time goodbye